Hello everybody, it's another app update video and this time the update is pretty big, it packs a lot of value. So let's not just waste time and get straight into it. Alright, so the first thing you can see is the brand new awesome looking interface. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, it's way better than it was before, still has some issues, but I mean this is a huge improvement. So I won't be too specific about things, so if you're just kind of interested more, just go ahead, I'll leave a link in, the, in this description for the app and just play with it yourself. I think it's quite self-explanatory, but let's just go like uh, panel by panel, new feature by new feature to tell you what's, what's happening. The sound starts in this generate panel, right? So here we can select our number of partials, we can change our pseudo octave, we can change our spectrum type, this is all that we already had in the previous version. The new stuff is this amplitude slope. Uh, so what it does, it's basically uh, add zero it, all the amplitudes. Like here you can see that all amplitudes are equal. And is, as I increase it, it will go down at one. It will be mimicking the uh, sawtooth wave. So the amplitude will be one divided by uh, ratio. And then if we increase it, it will kind of accentuate fundamental more. So we can listen to how it sounds uh, by pressing play. Yeah, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and of course, maybe if you use the previous app, you notice that the synthesizer is much more responsive to the change in the parameter. So for example, this pseudo octave, if I press play, yeah, I, I think that's pretty good improvement as well. After generate panel, whatever information of the spectrum we have, it goes into a tweak panel. And the uh, tweak panel, well, it allows us to tweak individual partial, their ratios, and their amplitudes. Uh, so if we have six partials over here, uh, we have six these panels in the tweak section. If we increase that, of course, there'll be more. Uh, but let's stick to, I don't know, to, to six. That's simple enough. And what we can do with that, for example, uh, previously, you could use this Edo slider to generate the inharmonic spectrum that fits not to just intonation, but to 12-tone equal temperament. Uh, and if you're new to the channel and you don't know how that works, check out my previous videos. Um, that's a pretty interesting concept. So one way you can see that, of course, is those minimums. They start to fall on the notes of 12-tone uh, equal temperament. And with harmonic one, they don't. So one thing you can do is that you can adjust the... Let's actually update it so everything is by default state. Uh, so what you can do is you can adjust ratios of partials and try to target, uh, well, the notes of 12th equal temperament or any other tuning that you can uh, specify in, in here uh, with this slider, major thick interval. So for example, I can... Uh, put it to 7, and that will divide our octave into 7 equal parts, and I can try to come up with some inharmonicity to, yeah, uh, to fit that tuning. So I guess let me try to do it uh, right now. So if I press play, I can just start adjusting. I think the fundamental is too strong, so I can attenuate its amplitude. And you can see that it shows the actual value that goes into synthesizer like this. And the gray values, like here for amplitude and here for ratio, those are the ones that are coming from the generate panel. So if I change ratio here... Yeah, I can start adjusting. And you, as you can see, the uh, dissonance curve is dynamically updated. And if it's uh, too much partials, for example, you can just disengage some amplitudes to make your life a bit easier and then uh, turn them up to see what kind of minimums appear. So right, that is uh, close enough. 
it was actually a bit tricky. Uh, it's much easier to uh, do it for 12 tonical temperament, but yeah, here it is. Sounds a bit weird, uh, but I guess if you spend more time, you can come up with something more interesting. And the cool thing is that, of course, you can uh, enable or disable the tweaks panel and hear like how it was before. So right now, if it's enabled, sound like this. Normal harmonic spectrum. All right, so that is uh, interesting. And you can also compare uh, with what this Edo will do for the 7, for example. And as you can see, I think I made too much modifications. So this one is, of course, much closer to harmonic spectrum than whatever I came up with. But I guess, I mean, this is all about experimentation, right? I don't really know what I'm doing, <laughs> to be honest. But all right, uh, enough with that. Let's go to the next panel. It is this roughness profile. And roughness profile really stands for a dissonance curve. It's uh, the same thing. I just decided to change the name because it's not really the dissonance that we are plotting here, right? Dissonance is a very complex phenomenon. It's roughness. So I just decided to be a bit more specific. And the first slider is familiar from the previous version. It's just how many partials are coming into a calculation of roughness profile of dissonance curve. Um, and all this section here, this is new. We already uh, talked about major tick interval. Another companion of it is this show 12 E to minor ticks. It will engage those very faint uh, looking lines. I don't know if you can see them on YouTube, but they're there. They will just mark uh, notes of 12 tonical temperament, just in case you're interested. So, okay, so what this sweep is about. So I have my harmonic spectrum. If I uh, press this show sweep, look at the spectrum, this orange lines appear and this sweep ratio slider is getting active. So if I start tweaking that, we see that orange lines have exactly the same shape as our original spectrum. And also on the dissonance curve here, we can see what interval we are marking with them, basically. So if I sweep it up, it will go up in dissonance curve. And this is actually exactly how dissonance curve is getting calculated. So we take the copy of the spectrum, we put it into some interval, like for example here at this ratio, and we calculate the value of dissonance curve. Then we shift it a little bit, you know, and calculate new value. And this is how we do it for the all of those ratios. And what is interesting here is that, for example, we can put this ratio so that it falls on the minimum of dissonance curve, and we can see on the spectrum what is actually happening, what it is so interesting in that uh, ratio that it makes this sharp minimum. So let's check it out. And what we can see here is that at this position, those three partials, they start to coincide. Right? So, yeah, like this. So that's pretty interesting. And what about this ratio? So I know that some other partials probably will coincide there. Yeah, now these three partials are coinciding. See, and this is really what dissonance curve minimums mark. They just mark the places where the overall roughness is smaller, just because you have basically less partials kind of interacting with each other. And another cool thing is that you can press play, and then the synthesizer will play both the like initial, like low note, and the sweep uh, spectrum. So that's how it sounds, super weird. So that is pretty cool. Maybe it is too much with this uh, spectrum. Let's just try ordinary harmonic spectrum. I just disengage those tweaks and let's check it out. So for example, uh, let's just put it to unison. I press play. And then I will sweep it to the uh, thirds, to 
the fourth and fifth, and we'll see what is happening there. So yeah, pre pretty cool. And if we put that, for example, to 12 tonical temperament, you will see that those partials, for example, for thirds, they're a little bit off. So they're very close, but not exactly coinciding. Like, for example, let's go for sixths. So this is just intonation value. They coincided. And this is our 12 tonic cool temperament. They are just a little bit off. So I think this is a really cool way to visualize that and also a really cool way to play around with spectrums in order to find something more useful, you know, for your purpose. Uh, so you can just check out all those minimums and see if you are actually getting something interesting or it's just, just weirdness. So the last panel is export panel uh, where the new stuff is this um, checkbox here and that really now if you check the, it in it will generate the sound of uh, middle c so you don't need to punch in the exact value for middle c when you export it to the sampler it's much easier to just put this checkbox to true but if you uncheck it uh, then you get the frequency adjustment slider uh, that you can use so That's how it works, pretty simple. And yeah, maybe I forgot to say that if you don't show the sweep, of course, it doesn't play it. So, so I think that's about it. Um, I think I went through everything that I wanted to show. I think the update is pretty cool, and I was uh, trying my best to do it as fast as possible, so there's a lot of technical debt that I need to go through and just fix around. Uh, the code is not the best, so I won't expect any major updates on the app for like several months probably now. Because first of all, yeah, I need to make sure that the code is good. And to be honest, I think it's in a pretty good shape right now. Like the feature-wise, it's pretty good shape. There's a lot of stuff to experiment with. And I think I want to dive in more to, into research, into playing around with that, and maybe also focus on making the research videos like uh, I did before, not the app updates. So if you're interested in that and how tuning works and this uh, approach of inharmonic sounds and how they relate to new tunings, then uh, subscribe to the channel. You can also follow uh, me on Twitter. I will leave on the all the links in the description so there are just more frequent updates about the application and some other stuff are, is happening there. And also you can follow on Ko-Fi if that is interesting for you. But otherwise, thanks for watching and have a good day. Cheers.